The militia is our ultimate safety. We can have no security without it. The great object is that every man be armed. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, to Speech Spotlight. I'm your host, James Darian, and I know it has been a while, but I just want to have us start with a small little quote by Patrick Henry. Um, I looked these up on AZ Quotes, so uh, I'm not sure of the veracity of them, but I think this is a very good quote right here to start out with so just so everyone can get over their arguments about what the second amendment amendment means Uh, (laughs) the militia is our ultimate safety we can have no security without it the great object is that every man be armed thought that'd be a fun way to start it going off with uh, going off of a short little quote before we get into the meat of what we're reading today and today we're delving a bit away from america and looking at the french as I thought, I, as I saw this speech, and I thought this is a bit of an interesting one, the virtue of terror. That is definitely a. It sounds fascinating just in the concept. So let's walk through this, and we can. Uh, I'll write this, and you can tell me what you guys think in the comments below afterwards, uh, and I'll let you know my thoughts too. So let's just hop on into it. It is time to mark clearly the aim of the revolution and the end towards which we wish to move. It is time to take stock of ourselves, of the obstacles which we still face, and the means which we ought to adopt to attain our objectives. What is the goal for which we strive? A peaceful enjoyment of liberty and equality... The rule of that external, that eternal justice, whose laws are engraved, not upon marble or stone, but in the hearts of all men. We wish an order of things, where all low and cruel passions are enchained by the laws, all be- bene- beneficent and generous feelings aroused, where ambition is a de- desire to merit glory and to serve one's fatherland where distinctions are born only of equality itself, where the citizen is subject to the magistrate, the magistrate to the people, the people to justice, where the nation safeguards the welfare of each individual, and each individual proudly enjoys the prosperity and glory of his fatherland, where all spirits are enlarged, by the constant exchange of Republican sentiments and by the need of earning the respect of a great people, where the arts are to be a, are the adornment of liberty, where it, which ennobles them, and where commence, where commerce, commerce is the source of public wealth, not simply of monstrous opulence for a few families. In our country, we wish to substitute morality for egotism, probity for honor, principles for conventions, duties for etiquettes, and empire of reason for the tyranny of customs. Contempt for vice, for, for contempt for misfortune, pride for insolence, and love of honor for the love of money. That is to say, all the virtues and miracles of the Republic for all the vices and snobbishness of the monarchs. monarchy. We wish, in a word, to fulfill the requirements of nature, to accomplish the destiny of mankind, to make good the promises of philosophy that France, hitherto illust- illustrious among slave states, may eclipse the glory of all free people that have existed, become the model of all nations. That our ambition, that is our, that is our ambition, that is our aim. What kind of government can realize these marvels? Only a democratic government. But to found and to consolidate among us this democracy, 
to realize the peaceable rule of constitutional laws, it is necessary to conclude the war of liberty against tyranny and to pass successfully through the storms of revolution. Such is the aim of the revolutionary system which you have set up. Now, what is the fundamental principle of de democratic or popular government? That is to say, the essential, the essential mainspring upon which it depends and which makes it functional. It is virtue. I mean public virtue. That virtue is nothing else but love of fatherland and its laws. The splendor of the goal of the French Revolution is simultaneously the source of our strength and of our weakness. Our strength because it gives us an, ascend an ascendancy of truth over falsehood and of public rights over private interests. Our weakness because it rallies against us all vicious men, all those who in their hearts seek to despoil the people. It is necessary to stifle the domestic and foreign enemies of the Republic, or perish with them. Now, in these circumstances, the first maxim of our politics ought to be to lead the people by means of reason and the enemies of the people by terror. It is the basis of popular government in times of peace is virtue. The basis of popular government in times of revolution is both virtue and terror. Virtue without which terror is murderous. Terror without which virtue is powerless. Terror is nothing else than swift, severe, indomitable justice. It flows then from virtue. So, this is a very interesting, uh, <laughs> an interesting take. I'm not really, uh sure the full context of of the french revolution in whole um especially not this part of it but um when when i saw the when i saw this speech i thought this is an interesting perspective to share Th this is well interesting is probably the least uh useful word in the english dictionary but um it 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 shows another look at revolution, another look at re republic republican revolution and democratic revolution uh, going on around the same time as the U.S. revolution was going on. So, uh, you can see that there is very much a focus on law and fatherland here, and there are some interesting remarks I think. I, there I go saying interesting. There, there are some remarks that I would like to kind of go over and look at in this piece. Um, all right, so there's there's the in obvious intention of the revolution itself uh, and how they need to outline what they're moving towards. There, There is a self-reflection in it. Uh, an admittance of the need of virtue and of the people to be virtuous that, that comes that comes up repeatedly throughout this speech. Uh, you you all may have noticed I did fix the scrolling uh, so we don't have the troubles that we had before. But yeah, um, so I, I I I like the point that he's bringing up. We're searching for a peaceful enjoyment of liberty and equality. It it seems that globally, there are periods of revolution that happen simultaneously, at, at least among the Western world. And when you look at it like that, it, it's interesting to note, or it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's worth noting how at the same time, Amer or around the same period when Americans were fighting for their own liberty, you had the French fighting a revolution for liberty and equality. So the themes seem to seem to be almost universally happening happening at the same time. I, I just found that to be a fascinating um, little thing to notice. So So he has this whole section 
where he talks about all the things that they wish to have in place of what they see being the way the uh, the monarchy is currently running things. So it, it does give this yin and yang type of, and builds up an us versus them sort of narrative. It, it tells a story that that builds to the emotion of the people. It builds it builds to actually that was yeah it bu- it builds to what uh what the ideal of the revolution is but if you notice in this there's definitely uh it's interesting because it it's very curious how they bring it up to be oh here yeah here's where he goes into all the back and forth here there there is this sense of liberty but it doesn't necessarily have the same type of independence and individuality that is served in the american perspective while while there is while the americans do have this sense of this sense of uh a fatherland and of well maybe not necessarily fatherland but uh but creating a fatherland and having the us be uh, a na- a national treasure something that people love and wish to support and make great and make it great by them by them i find it i i find the the there to be i'm not sure if this is a parallel or a contrast where they talk about the fatherland here because there's a sense that they're pushing towards liberty and independence but at the same time it if it comes across as a social movement as something that can only be done in a more collective form and requires a sort of a sort of group mentality of doing things uh kind of for for the country for what is best for nature and for their fellow citizens before themselves so there's almost it it almost feels like there's a contradiction of of the freedom and the responsibility of the free because you have you had the freedom to basically do as you please or whatever the case may be you you had the freedom to to live your life uh, and have the equality to prosper within your nation, but also you, they're promoting that the prosperity is of the nation, and therefore all the people get to enjoy it in some way. Whereas it's not necessarily; it doesn't have that individuality to it, where you, you are able to achieve your own success through the nation this is a view of the nation's success that you get to enjoy. And I find this to be, in my perspective, a bit of a difference between a more collectivist thought and a more uh, independent-minded thought. But it, it's kind of funny how they, how despite them both having virtually the same thoughts, one takes it in an individualistic manner where the people willingly choose to do for their country, whereas the other is well, well yes it's the free people choosing to do for their country it's it's almost like the prosperity is central to the country before it is to the people um that's kind of my take i i, I still want to do more research on this but i i find i just found this to be fascinating and and, and the concept of terror being essential to revolution terror being essential to to giving power to virtue this is a fascinating concept in modern discourse as there is that that amount of of push for revolution uh so called from many uh from many people in modern society you have the push for for things like the great reset you have the push for equity currently instead of equality now things are p- pushing towards equity 
and, and you see marching in the streets and occasionally you see riots. So it's it's got that balance of both peaceful protests and then there's also the violent protests, which could be seen as the terror. But using the using the logic outlined in this speech, that is the uh, that terror would be seen as virtuous, as it is the driving force of the revolution. And I personally do not actually like this argument because a as long as anyone believes themselves to be virtuous, they can use this argument to justify any means by which they go about which by which they go about achieving their goals which they see as being virtuous goals so th there's there's a bit of an irony in this as it, def it defines itself based on virtue without principally establishing what virtue is though perhaps at this time period virtue had a more specific meaning than it has in modern times, it it, it just seems very. It, it it seems like a thought process to be very cautious of, would be the phrasing phrasing that I would use for it. Anyhow, that is today's speech. I hope you all liked it. Uh, it's it's pretty quick, but yeah, there there we go. So. What did you all think? Was that a good speech from the French Revolution? Do you think that my analysis of the terror being uh, able to justify virtually anything, as any movement will see itself as being, quote-unquote, virtuous? Uh, or do you see, uh, do you have a different take? Do you see the logic in what he's saying as being essential and correct? Uh for my part, I see it as being both accurate and not good. Uh, I, I, I like to put things simply. I, I see it as accurate as there is the need for a force of arms for any revolution and for any cause. Otherwise, your cause will be disbanded. That's also why I want to start with that short quote by Patrick Henry about the right to bear arms, about all men, about how the goal is for all men to be armed, um, whereas the uh, putting that besides beside this real this acknowledgement of terror being a, a natural part of revolution, it's. It's kind of a scary thought because in reality, this this essentially means that there is no peace. Peace is not necessarily long term possible. It's only a, it's only a temporary state at best. That that is my take on it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Remember, give it the thumbs up if you think it deserves that. Uh, you know what to do if you don't like it, and uh, leave a comment if you choose. If you so choose, it's been real, guys. Uh, so remember to subscribe and follow me on all of my networks. I am at commutationconstruct.locals.com. You can follow me on BitChute at Commutation Construct, YouTube at Commutation Construct, uh, Gab and Minds at James Darian, and Twitter at, at Commutation C. Uh, I will post the links in the in the description below. So it's been real. I will talk to you guys later. See ya.